Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Brother Malachi. We are the Franciscan Friars, and I forgot which Franciscan Friars we were. Of the, uh, uh, of the renewal. <laughs> this week, we're going to talk about the take 10. We got it. Right. There you go. We got this. Got that. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Brother Malachi. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. This week, we're going to talk about being saved by the bell and the ways in which the little interruptions of our lives are actually invitations to the Lord. Boom, boom. All right, man. So we were speaking the other day about going all in, you know, about this experience of giving everything to the Lord. And sometimes when I think about that, I think of like these big moments or these big acts of, you know, charity or kindness or love or devotion or prayer, or whatever. And I was just praying the other day and there was this experience I was having again where I had a sense that, you know, God was, God was showing me a new way in a, in a simpler way in which he was inviting us to go all and inviting me. And I thought of this 90s TV show, which some of y'all probably watched, you know, Saved by the Bell, you know, you got Zach and Slater and Jesse and the whole posse screech. So anyhow, I'm thinking about that line and it just comes to me. And I was remembering um, the experience when I joined the community. So part of religious life, all right, we've got a prayer schedule throughout the day. So there's five different times in the morning, a couple times, in midday, in the afternoon, and at night, where we come together for prayer in our chapels. Um, and in order for the brothers that are around the friary doing different things or in their bed still in the morning to know that prayer is going to be happening about five minutes before we ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. A lot of times, if I'm honest with myself, the bell rings and I'm just like... Oh man, five more minutes in my bed, please, just five more minutes, you know? Or I'm in the middle of whatever, you know, moment in the day doing my work, doing something, and I'm just like, the bell rings, and you're just like, oh man, right now, right now, you know? And I mean, I don't know about you if you've had that kind of like journey in your own vocation, but, but it was something that just was beginning to reflect on that experience, you know, this change in the relationship to the bell. I'm not going to lie, I was saved by the bell this morning. <laughs> I was totally saved by the bell this morning. Not the alarm clock. The alarm clock went off, but then it also went off. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? And whoever the prayer leader was was like, he gave it a good ring. Oh, yeah. You know, and I do, I have like an automatic like response now, again, oh, like totally. about a decade into it. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it was like, okay, like God's calling. You got to go and I got to, you know, I got to be, but I didn't want to. And I had time mm -hmm. though, just to grab a little bit of coffee. Oh just man, a little that's bit of coffee clutch. That's clutch, dude. I'm telling you, man. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's like there, there is a sense in which um, for me, like um, I love the prayer bell, even though I, sometimes I hate it. I, I'm yeah. just being real. Can we be mm -hmm. honest here? We've, you know, we know each other a little bit. Uh, sometimes I hate it because it's like, especially the midday bell. Mm. Because I got stuff to do. I'm an important person, <laughs> you know? I got stuff to get done. Um, but then that prayer bell comes, and the Lord, it's like, um, and it's typically in religious life, it's called like the Vox Dei, like the, the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Like, God calls. He's like, all right, mm -hmm. it's me time. It's me time. And I just got to remember that because I don't always frame it that way. It's like, okay, this is an interruption, not this is an invitation. Because, mm -hmm. like, the Lord, like Jesus, wants some time with me, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Man. Yeah, and I can remember, you know, there was a moment, um, Father Benedict Groeschel, who was one of our founders of our community, I was driving him around in a car, I was his personal chauffeur, and, and it was actually in the last year of his life, and I remember it was just me and him, I'm still in temporary vows, and I'm driving along, and I'm like, holy cow, this is like an awesome opportunity, I need to ask like a really profound question, and I'm sitting here thinking like, what do I ask, what do I ask, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I got it, I got it, I'm like, so Father Benedict, um, you know, if you're going to give advice to like, uh, you know, a, a TP brother, you know, a temporary professed friar, like how to be holy as a religious, you know, you know what would you say? You know, I'm like, that was great. That was a great question. You know, <laughs> nice just, you know, <laughs> so Father Benedict always surprised me pretty much all the time. Uh -huh. And he did not fail in that moment. So all of a sudden we're driving and he's got this nice pregnant pause where it's just silence and you're like, Okay, it's getting awkward, you know. Did you hear me? Did you yeah, hear me? exactly. And so then all of a sudden he's just like, well, brother, I have to say that the secret to holiness is me riding in this van with you right now down the road and realizing that that is God's will for me. And I'm like, and I say yes to that. And I was like, whoa, wow, that was a lot deeper than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it broke something open for me because, you know, again, like this all in living in my mind, sometimes, you know, there's maybe a little bit of this idealism 
that, that looks for it somewhere else mm -hmm. and, and wants it to be on the other side of the fence where the grass is always greener, right? But it's right now. It's right here. It's this present moment that's pregnant with the presence of God mm -hmm. and is an invitation, like you were saying, the Vokes Day. Like life is an invitation to relationship mm -hmm. with the Father. But sometimes we don't experience it that way, you know? Sometimes we experience it, as you're saying, like an interruption, an obstacle, something I need to, oh, I got to do this now. Oh, again. And also I find, you know, as we were sharing, right, like the experiences sometimes with your vocation or in life, you start off and you're like pumped. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's like a New Year's resolution. I'm totally all in. I'm going to like change my diet. I'm gonna... And then slowly over time, the ordinariness begins to wear on you. And the ability to say yes and the choice to really go for it, it starts to wane. Because it gets tough. Let's be honest. It's tough. Like, an ongoing yes is difficult. And yet, it's in that yes. It's in the little moment, right? Where, where my baby cries at night and I'd rather roll over and ignore. Where I've got homework to do for school and I'd rather go hang out with my friends. Where my spouse hasn't had anybody listen to her all day and I'm home from work and I'm tired and I'd just rather not. Mm -hmm. You know, all these little moments or the bell goes off for me to get up a little earlier for prayer or it's Sunday morning and I don't want to deal with the kids so I'm just not going to yeah. bother getting up and making the effort to go to church. All these little moments, invitations from God for us to encounter Him in these little ways. Okay, here is God breaking in to your life and inviting you to Him and there's something beautiful about it because it's like, okay, I didn't choose this for myself, mm -hmm. right? And I have kind of a small brain and a small perspective, <laughs> right? Like yeah. I, have, I have a real strong opinion about what's good for me. Oh, yeah. But I also trust that God has a much better opinion mm -hmm. for what's good for me. And so yeah. when there's these moments that I wouldn't choose for myself, like I try and I, and I pray about it. I'm working on it like, okay, Lord, I trust that this interruption, this moment, is an opportunity to go deeper than I would mm. take. I would go by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I say yes to it because I say yes to you and I trust in your goodness and your plans for my own life. And Father Andrew, one of our founders, he, he used to say to us, like, the Lord who heard you say yes, mm. who, who had you go all in for him, mm -hmm. doesn't now want you to say no. Doesn't mm. now want you to hold back, you know? And it's like, feel it. Feel and, and Our Lady, Our Lady lived this be it yeah. done unto me according to your word. And she didn't just say yes mm. to the incarnation of the Holy Spirit at that moment. She said yes to the Lord's nativity. Mm. She said yes to the flight in the desert. She said yes to the Lord's passion. Mm -hmm. Like she said yes to all of yeah. it. And so it's like, let our yes be yes and our no be no. But like, mm -hmm. our, like when we say yes to the Lord Jesus, like we don't take it back, you Amen. know? We want to no. say it in every moment because we know it's coming. We know the interruptions are coming. The bells are coming. <laughs> the Vokes day, he's going to be calling. The interruptions are on their way every day uh -huh. but can we with God's grace like we can we experience these interruptions as the Vokes day as the invitation of the Lord to him in a real intimate way and to his plans for for our good let's pray about it we thank you so much for watching we'll see you again next week somos peregrinos poco a poco, poco. vamos a llegar we're gonna make it we'll see you again next week God, God bless, bless.